Okay, welcome back, ENG uh, or uh, 460 here. Let's see, we're doing a MIPS processor in BHDL. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> last time we did a, kind of a simple instruction memory here. And today I want to write a test bench on that just to verify that I can give it an address, which would come from the program counter, and then it would output an instruction that we could uh, run into our uh, subsequent stages, our controller, our MUX to our register file, our sign extended uh, component, and so forth. All right, so let's uh, generate a uh, test bench file for this. Here is my instruction memory. Uh, read address in, instruction out, and then I basically created a data structure that was um, <coughs> a memory <coughs> that had uh, 16 elements, and uh, each element was uh, 32 bits at the output. Right? Okay, so at this point right here, we need to create a test bench file. So let's do new source VHDL test bench. And let's see, let's call this instruction memory. It's a test bench file. Instruction memory, looks like I got that right. Um, TB, and then make sure test bench is highlighted. Next. Well, it's a test bench file, so what are you going to test? Well, this one is for the instruction memory. So let's select that. And finish. And then at this point, it's the same old stuff I've been doing all along. Let's get rid of the comments. And, you know, you might uh, need that guy. We'll keep that around. Um, I don't like the way it does the 87 instantiation. I'm not going to use any clocks. So let's rewrite this 87 instantiation using the 93 format. Uh, work dot, and then let's see, what's the uh, architecture? It should be behavioral. And then port map, uh, bring that over there, and there you go. We have instantiated this. Now let's call this guy U1 or something like this. Uh, that's the name of the component. Okay, and we'll see that U1 test. Okay. And let's see, we don't need the clock process because we're not running a clock into this thing. And I do want to modify my stimulus process. And how do I do that? Well, the first thing I want to do is put my assert. Now, assert false. Um, let's see, when that's false, this will get executed. And then let's see, you can uh, report some message. And then you could do severity. And there's all kinds of severity uh, levels. The, the most severe is the failure level, and that causes the simulation to end. And I like that because what that basically does is uh, allows me to zoom in on whatever is out in front of this assert guy. All right. So at that point, let's save things and see where our um, errors are. Let's see, we've got some errors here. Uh, oh, up here, instruction memory, I didn't even see that. Okay, behavioral, let's save that. A little typo. Okay. And at that point, um, yeah, we need to put some uh, contents into our test. Well, let's just try to read from the instruction memory. Okay. If I try to read from the instruction memory, Inside this stimulus process, I could put uh, a little for loop like that. All right. Let's uh, see what we've got here. Okay, now one thing I always like to do in my test bench files, you know, you don't have to do it, but um, I kind of like doing it. I like prefixing all my variables with TB, so I know that they are part of the test bench module. Okay, easy to distinguish. Now the variables on the left side of the uh, mapping operator are inside the component and these are inside the ones of the TB are inside this actual file and what I'm going to do here is I am going to loop from 0 to 11 because I have 12 commands if you go back and look at my instruction memory even though I had a 16 memory uh, instruction memory I'm only using um, the first 12 for commands okay, so I'm going to loop from 0 to 11 for 12 commands I'm going to set my read address to be 40 quad 0. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take i, which is going to go from 0 to 11. I'm going to multiply it by 4, since I want to read 4 bytes, one word. And then I have to convert it to unsigned to create that, to convert the integer to an unsigned, and then to a standard logic vector. And then I'll just use a, an or, a bitwise or, to get the actual value. And then I'm going to wait for 25 nanoseconds, and then I'm going to... Uh, Complete, uh, repeat this. So what's going to happen is this TB read address is going to take on values of 40 quad 0, 40, 0, 0, 0, 4, 40, 0, 0, 0, 8, 40, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, C, and it's going to kind of uh, step through our memory. All right. So at that point, let's uh, let's see. Where's my instruction memory? Let's check syntax on that, and let's check syntax on my test bench file. Well, still got some errors here. Okay, it doesn't like my standard logic vector and my two unsigned. Well, that's probably because I didn't uncomment the numeric standard. 
Okay. So let's do that and then let's start all over again. Check syntax, instruction, memory, nothing changed. Test bench, check syntax. Yep, I think we're good there. And then make sure the test bench is highlighted. Double click simulate behavioral model. And what we should be doing is reading through our memory. Okay. A little real estate management here. Notice this is TB instruction. Note it instantiates a component called U1 test. And then over here, if I zoom to full view, let's see. Oh, got a problem there. Okay, looks like we have a problem here. Um, yeah, if you look at the stuff down here, it tells me I've got a, oh, a bad index. Oh, yeah, because my memory only goes from 0 to 16, and I'm trying to access index negative 100, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6. Well, clearly that's out of bounds. All right, let's go see if we can uh, figure out what's going on here. Yeah, and what's going on is kind of the way I do this. When I assert um, a reset inside the instruction memory, it comes along and sets the read address to the one right before 40 quad zero on a word aligned. So I need to make sure that guy's defaulting to this value in my test bench. So in my test bench file, where I uh, initialize this guy up here, well, I need to change that. And that needs to uh, be set to the value that I want to hold the program counter when I'm not actually executing a program, which would be 3F quad F. Or no, is it quad F? Yeah, I think, is that it? 3F quad C. Right, so the initial value on your read address has to be 003F FFFFC because if you go back to your instruction memory, that's kind of um, when the system is being reset, I'm kind of um, testing the read address and then I'm outputting an instruction zero. Otherwise, I'm actually going to read the read address. So we need that. If we have that in there, then let's save everything. And let's see, that one's ready. This guy is ready. Um, let's just rerun all real quick. And we will uh, make sure that's selected. Simulate behavioral model. And let's see what we have here. And I think it works. Yeah, I think it works. Um, can I scroll back a little bit here. The first line is read address, so 40 quad 0, 40 0, 0, 4, 40 0, 0, 0, 8, 40 0, 0, 0, C, 40 0, 0, 1, 0, 40 0, 0, 1, 4. So we're stepping through memory. And this guy right here is the binary value of an AND, an OR instruction, an ADD instruction, a SUBTRACT instruction. I think this was a uh, set less than and a branch equal. And then we're back to an ADD. I'm just repeating the code. Here's an ADD, here's an ADD. Then I go to an AND, there's my AND. Then I go to an ADD, there was my other ADD. Then I go to a SUBTRACT, there was my SUBTRACT. Then I go to my SET LESS THAN, there's my first SET LESS THAN. And then I go to my JUMP. So yeah, I'm able to read through memory and pull out those instructions. All right, those guys are going to go to the sign extender in the register file. Uh, register file. So if we um, go back and look at our code, right, let's look at our code. What we basically did is we just uh, read these values. There's my AND, there's my OR, ADD, SUBTRACT, SET LESS THAN, BRANCH EQUAL, AND, OR, ADD, SUBTRACT, SET LESS THAN, AND JUMP. Go back to the simulation. There you go. Zoom to full view. There's my AND, OR, ADD, SUBTRACT, SET LESS THAN, BRANCH EQUAL, AND, OR, ADD, SUBTRACT, SET LESS THAN, AND THE JUMP COMMAND down there at 4002C. And double check that one more time. Yep, at 40002C, uh, there's my jump. All right, so there you go. I think uh, our instruction memory is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop there.